What's up guys, this is Casey Underhill and I'm bringing a very quick Blender tutorial today. I got a question on my mountain scene asking how I could move the camera around the mountains in the scene, uh, basically to animate it. So I'm just going to real quick show you guys how that can be possible. Uh, this is the mountain scene, obviously I've turned off my trees and a lot of the textures just to make it a little faster. Um, and this is where our camera is located. So let me go up to my top view. And there's my camera here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, add mesh, nope, add curve, and add a path. And it's kind of hard to see. It's like right on the edge of my mountains, I think. Yeah, it is. So let me grab that path. I'm going to move it somewhere right about here, right on the back side of my camera. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode. I just want to make this path a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to grab it, pull it out about here, and grab it and pull it right about there. Okay, so it's been a while since I've actually done this. So hopefully. I think you grab the camera first and then the path. Let me see here. And I'm going to hit Control P. Yes, Control P, follow path. Boom. So you can see now that there's this little dotted line going from the camera to the path. Um, that line is going to be what actually moves your camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my camera and I'm going to move it right to where that dotted line is at. So now if I look through my camera view, obviously we get the side of the mountain. We probably don't want that. <coughs> but I'm just going to leave it that way for now. Um, but all I have to do now is go over to my, oops, let me click on my path. Go to my curve settings pa uh, tab. And under the path animations, this is how many frames it's going to take uh, to get from one side of the line to the other side of the line. So since I'm ending at 250 frames, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 250. Now if you want this to be longer, uh, let's say you want it to be 450, then you could set that to 450 and set your end time to 450. Now it's going to take much longer to get to the end of that path. Your camera's going to move a lot slower. Um, but I, I wanted about 250, so I'm just going to hit it right there. And I will do it again over here. And the evaluation time is basically where your camera is going to start. So if you tell it to evaluate five seconds, it'll start moving five seconds before it actually animates it. Um, kind of hard to explain, but you can always you can always mess around with it and see what kind of um, uh, effects you get with it. Um, Anyways, let me go ahead and just hit my play and show you that it is now panning across my mountains and it turns with the curve like this. And it's about to reach the end of the curve. And there it is, 250. So now it's just going to cycle back through that over and over again. Um, obviously, this isn't the best looking animate, animation. Um, what you probably want is to make sure that you center it around your mountain so that you're not getting the sides, uh, anything like that. <coughs> <coughs> and, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all you really have to do. If you want to change that path at all, just click on your path, click into tab, uh, edit mode, and then you can go ahead and, you know, mess around with this a little bit. Grab this, and then you can like turn your camera this way a little bit so it's pointing your mountain a little more. And let me show you what it looks like from the outside. You see the camera is just following this path completely. It'll get all the way to the end. And if you want to move your camera you can always do that as well. You can make it a little bit closer to the mountains and it'll still move this dotted line right here. So if I hit play, you can see it moves the dotted line, which moves your camera. 
<coughs> and there we have it. So let me uh, show you one more view from the inside here. And I think it's going to turn a little bit too much. Yep, a little bit. But you get the general idea. If you wanted to move your camera actually through your mountains, uh, you could do that as well. <coughs> All you'd have to do is maybe grab it from a different point of view like this. <coughs> Hold on, I got this one messed up here. You can grab this on the Z. I'll grab it on the Y axis. I'll pull it right up into the mountains so it gets right up close to it. So it'll end right about here. And then we can just go back to our original frame. And you can see now, it's going to have a little bit of a vertical movement as well. So it's going to start to slope. And there it goes. Right up into the mountains. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the basics of just getting a camera to move around your scene. Um, once you're finished and you like how that looks, you like how your camera actually moves, um, all you got to do is click on render and render animation. Um, <coughs> I would love to show you how a uh, finished animation would look, but my computer is very, very slow, so I'm just not... I'm not going to hit the render animation button. You guys can do that for yourself, but you get the idea of how this works. Okay, so uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you guys was, um, if you'll notice here, my camera, when it swings around this, um, this path here, it starts to rotate and turn away from the mountain. And I don't want it to turn away from the mountain. I want it to be right at the center. Um, I want it to always be looking at the center of the mountain. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop my animation here. With my 3D cursor in the center, I'm going to Shift A, and I'm going to add an empty plane axis. And that's just going to give me this. You can't see it in a render. Uh, it's, it's basically just a placeholder. But here's what we're going to do. Let's unselect it for now. Let's select our camera, and then Shift Select the plane axis. Once we have that, we want to hit Control T and Track to Constraint. And you'll see this blue dotted line appears and that our camera tilted just, just a little bit. So here's what it's going to do. As soon as I hit the play button, you'll see that the camera is now tracking that empty and will only stare at the empty. Um, this is a very nice way if you're having a long scene. Um, you can make it track a bunch of different empties throughout your scene so that you never lose focus on your camera and you don't have to worry about your path. You just get your camera from one end of the scene to the other and you're still looking at the same object. Uh, maybe this will be a little more clear if I show you through the camera view. Uh, you can see that the empty is right in the center and I'm staring at that mountain range. So now if I hit my play button this empty is going to always stay in the center of my camera. So no matter where my path takes me, I'm always looking at the center of my mountain. Uh, this is actually a very nice way to get rid of having to move around the uh, edges of your scene and things like that. Um, so if I wanted to move that focus of the camera, all I would have to do is move this empty. So let's go to the camera view. Let's grab the empty and I'll go down on the Z axis and you'll see that my camera immediately follows the empty. Just like this. So, another neat little trick, if you wanted to do something like this, <coughs> I'm going to Shift A, add a curve path, and it's kind of hard to see because of my mountain range. It's very, very hard to see because of my mountain range. Okay, actually, I'm going to move my mountains to my layer 2 so I can see. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this 
by 90 degrees. And let me grab it right up underneath my empty. I don't know why I'm not in orthographic view. Grab this on the X, pull it right about here. I'm going to grab my empty and pull it to the bottom of that axis of the plane. And then I'm going to grab my plane axis and my path. And I'm going to control P, follow path. So now, if I go into the op options for that curve and make this 250 frames as well. And let me go and bring back my mountain. So let me move this to layer one. So you can see my camera is now pointing at the base of my mountain. Um, but let me show you what happens when I hit my play button. Oops, I've got it upside down. <laughs> that figures. Let me grab my... There it is. <coughs> and rotate that by 180. Ha. Ah. Then I will grab this on the z-axis, pull that down. Ha! Let's pull it just a little bit more. Right there. Okay. So, now I hit my play button. And my camera begins moving from the bottom of my mountain to the top of my mountain. And by the 250th frame, it will now be at the tip top of my mountain, showing the tips. And animating is just that easy. So once you kind of set up a couple of paths and scenes, uh, it's real easy to just go hit your render button, hit your render animation, and uh, render out a very nice looking scene. Um, like I said, my computer's kind of slow, so I'm not going to render the actual animation for you, but I hope this helps you guys in uh, animating a nice scene around the mountains. Um, <coughs> If you guys have any more questions or any uh, suggestions on things that you'd like to see in the future from me, uh, give me a shout out in the comments and I'll try to answer them and try to get videos up as soon as possible. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching.